there's every reason to anticipate that a tessie would easily find sperm. My name is Joseph Falukal. I'm a urologist on faculty at Columbia University Irving Medical Center in New York Presbyterian. Probably the most common terminology you're going to hear thrown around between a reproductive urologist, a patient, and an IVF center is quote unquote TESE, T-E-S-E, and that's an abbreviation for testicular sperm extraction. Now really all we're talking about is a procedure uh, designed to get some amount of tissue out of the central portion of the testicle which presumably should have some sperm in it. I want you to think of somebody who has had, for example, a vasectomy two or three years ago, a procedure just to block up the tubes that allow sperm to get out of his body. Uh, and prior to his vasectomy had no problems conceiving, say, three children. That patient, if there's been no change in his medical history, it's not been very long since his vasectomy and he and his partner want to move forward with having a child through IVF. There's every reason to anticipate that a tessie would easily find sperm. Now that's only one group of people. There's obviously lots of other patients who we see who have varying likelihoods of success relative to that particular example. As we go all the way down the spectrum from that being one extreme where sperm are easily found, at the opposite end of the spectrum is a procedure called micro tessy, uh, which is an abbreviation for micro dissection testicular sperm extraction. Now what we're talking about is the patient whom we suspect there's a very low likelihood of the production of sperm being normal, okay, or, or sort of complete. And instead, what we're really hoping to do is to improve our chances of finding rare pockets or foci where sperm making is going on. Uh, inevitably, that kind of procedure has to be done in close coordination with an IVF center who would take receipt of the sperm that are found and then perform IVF with them. Some of the options that exist between those two extremes uh, vary in terms of invasiveness and uh, the amount of sort of anesthesia that is required for the patient. So one of these, for example, is something called uh, PISA, percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration. Now we're just using a needle and we're trying to take sperm out of the epididymis. In my practice, this is typically done in the patient where we know there to be an obstruction um, that can't be corrected with surgery. Uh, this could be done in an office in a 10 to 15 minute procedure with local anesthetic alone and the patient very comfortable with a relatively straightforward and easy recovery afterwards. In the same way, you can aspirate sperm using a needle from the testicle. This is called a TISA, testicular sperm aspiration. Uh, again, done a needle-based procedure and again, could be potentially done with local anesthetic only. These options, I think, exist for, for some but not all patients in most cases. And you do have to be willing to ask your reproductive urologist if they're suggesting to you one or the other of these, well, doctor, why? You know, why do you think it's appropriate in my particular case that we should be doing this procedure and not, say, a different procedure? And that person, that practitioner should be able to answer that question for you pretty easily.